There's been some questions on the FEMAP group on Yahoo recently regarding uh, linear versus nonlinear buckling. I'm going to use this uh, sample model of this uh, simple tower structure. Uh, it's basically 6061 T6 aluminum, uh, 6 by 6 uh, tubes as shown there, and also 4 by 4 uh, cross stiffeners. We usually use this model just as an introduction to FEMAP in uh, FEA modeling. Uh, you could certainly just tet mesh this entire structure and use glued contact and, and NX Nastran to hook all this thing together. together. Uh, however, the model is going to be quite large. You can see there that uh, you know, mesh-wise it's 1.8 million nodes. In a linear static type situation with some of the new um, iterative solvers, you could certainly run a statics run on that in, in a reasonable time. However, as you, as you go a little deeper into analysis like we're going to do today, uh, with a, a nonlinear buckling, and you get into a transient dynamic solution, uh, the model solve times are going to get to the point where it, it's basically prohibitive, especially for making changes. So uh, what we're going to do here is the, basically the standard process a FEMAP user would use. You bring in your solid model, extract some center lines uh, to, to find the center of the geometry, and then the analyst would basically specify a material property, uh, R6061 T6 aluminum, uh, you'd then set up your cross sections, you know, the simple 6x6, 4x4 boxes, uh, set a global mesh size, and then, and then mesh it. So we, we can make a model very quickly. It's a very limited number of nodes. You can very, very quickly edit the material properties and or the, the cross section properties and change the thicknesses of, of the tubes. And you can also very easily add or remove uh, stiffening tubes to kind of optimize your design. So it's kind of the point of, of, of idealizing the structure as shown. But today we're going to look at uh, setting up the model for linear buckling versus nonlinear buckling. All right, here's our model, uh, as you saw in the, in the introduction there. But just to give you an idea, it's got the uh, cross sections turned on. But it's basically just a simple beam model. Uh, we've got a vertical or a downward force um, at the four corner nodes. And the bottom is constrained at, at, at the bottom there. So it, you know, fairly simple model. So let's go ahead and set up a, a linear uh, buckling analysis first. So I'll go over to the, the model info pane FEMAP and say manage. And I want to create a new um, analysis set here. So I want to do a uh, buckling and I can give it a, uh, a title. Make that linear buckling. Say OK. And we could go here and set a bunch of options, but you know, FEMAP actually by default sets you up you know, straight away for a um, you know, linear buckling. Uh, it's got our, our, our constraint set and our load set, there's, so there's, there's really not a lot to do here except uh, press the button and, and let an analysis run. And the model is very small, it's only 460 nodes, so it, it's going to knock it out pretty quick. Uh, it's already done pretty much solving, the results are already back in. So we'll go back and let's just take a look at what we got here. So it does a you know, static load case and then the, the, uh, the buckling case, so eigenvalue at, at 0.7999. So basically at 80% of the load applied, uh, this structure would buckle. So I'll right click on that results and say deformed. And actually the undeformed model is also displayed. So let me, I guess the geometry is being displayed. Let me turn that off. Geometry's off, and there's the blue is the undeformed structure. We can, we can turn that on and off with this flag here. But you see the deformed structure, so the the, uh, the tower buckles at that 80% load, and that is that is basically done with a linear eigenvalue analysis. Now the question has been, how do we do a a nonlinear analysis? Uh, basically, in FEMAP, you need to create uh, a function to ramp the load up. So I've gone there. I've already created this function, but I'll, I'll just show it to you. We'll edit it. You'll see it basically just runs from at, at time zero, the, the, the factor on the load is zero, from time equals one to um, the, the factor on the load to be full one, one times the load, so basically at 100 percent. So then we can set up our nonlinear analyses to, to basically use this ramping up of the load. So back on the load itself, uh, we're in load set two. Um, there's a load definition, force on node. If I edit that load, you'll see that that uh, function has been attached to my my loading, basically making it a, a ramped up nonlinear load. So just like we set up the linear buckling run, we're going to go into our analysis manager, 
say manage and I'm going to create a new analysis set and this one instead of linear buckling I'm going to go down and go to a nonlinear static run now this basic will ramp it up statically it doesn't take into account any uh, motion and inertias and things we'll do this first and say OK and again FEMAP does set up the defaults it does have the the boundary conditions already in those loads are in uh, but I do need to set up some nonlinear options I'm going to hit the defaults button let it fill in the defaults uh, let's do uh, 10 time steps We'll say max iterations per step at 25. And I do want um, intermediate output. That way I'll get the results uh, in between so we can kind of do a nice animation of it of it ramping up. So at this point, that's really all I need to set up. I'm just going to make sure that set 2 is the active one and then hit the analyze button again. Now this is running a nonlinear run, so it's actually got to do a little more work, but the model is still uh, pretty small, so it's already through a lot of iterations. Uh, you also get load step conversions and I think what happens here is it basically fails to converge once it gets to the um, to the buckling load so we'll go ahead and read in uh, those load steps and we'll see that basically it starts iterating in uh, you know not a big deal in the linear region here but it gets to the point where the model goes nonlinear and that's when it, and it, it basically fails to converge after that so I'm going to pick, use the shift key to pick all these result sets and I can say do a multi-set animate and we'll see actually, you can actually see the linear portion as it's, it's still linear and then it starts to go non-linear. So it's kind of the difference between the linear bucking and the, uh, buckling and the non-linear buckling. And you can see it, it starts to happen right about the same point but there is certainly the point after buckling where the thing is still carrying load, it's just displacing a lot more until it gets to a, a major failure when it when it when it fully buckles around this 84 percent of load so that the you know the true failure or, or or catastrophic buckling would happen a little bit higher than the linear analysis uh, shows you uh, just to give you an idea of this a little bit more let's go into an xy plot uh, node 129 is one of those corner nodes up there and i can say i'm just going to pull we need a z translation so that's T3, and I can say show me from those load sets a plot of that nodal displacement. And you can see what happens here is that everything is linear up to a certain point around 80%, which is where the linear buckling tells you things go wrong. But then you really don't get to a, uh, to a major change in displacement until a little bit higher. So if I turn on the, um, the data points here, Let's put on the pairs there, or I can put the values is good enough. Is that right? No, those are displaced. Let's put the full pair, data pair. So I could zoom in down here at end where it's where it's starting to to go, and you can see that it you know 82 and a half percent of load. It's still fairly linear. At 82.8 is when it really starts to drop off. So that kind of gives you a better idea of the of the true buckling um, behavior of this part.